Guys, welcome to game three between Rancor and Masuchi. Thus far, Masuchi up 2 0, upper right corner. Masuchi starting as the blue Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the red Zerg. This is on Fighting Spirit, once again, Fighting Spirit Mania. First set, game three. And I'm going to say, thus far, it has been build order victories that have allowed Masuchi to take the initial two matches. There is. I actually wonder if the rock, paper, scissors thing has become, I don't know. I, I feel like I need to go back. I feel like out of all of the casting groupings, the one that I have kind of fallen the most behind on and still haven't fully caught up to is modern ZVZ. And that is the one where I think that's another reason I enjoy this set is to be able to kind of catch up on that. Maybe it's because there's just a lack of Zerg that sneak into Hasu League for whatever reason, there just ends up not being a lot of ZVZ there. And even when there is ZVZ, I hate to see it because it's like we lose yet another person who's not a Protoss player. It's not that I dislike Protoss uh, players or don't want them to win. It's just that we have so many Protoss in those leagues. Looks like we're seeing another Nine Pool, Nine Pool Gas. This time for Rancor. We are seeing an Overlord first build order from Masuchi. Looking to see once he hits 200, if he's going to go ahead and plop down. Looks like he's going to opt for a 12 hatchery this time. So potential build order advantage. And Rancor, yeah, gonna just try to layer on the pressure with Zergling speed. Just gonna grab that 100 gas, get the upgrade and pull it off. Looks like we are in fact seeing a 12 pool opposite side for Masuchi. So advantage once again to Masuchi as far as just flat build orders and just through build order and anticipation. Let's see if he, yeah, he's going to go ahead and plop this. Now, again, with some micro, some micro and some luck, it is possible that Rancor can still pull this off. It looks like rather than going for Zergling Speed, this time he is opting to go Lair first. And actually pumping drones behind this. So he will have... And we'll see if Masuchi opts for Zergling Speed himself. Because if he opts for Zergling Speed... This could be a big advantage for Rancor, potentially. He's going to be behind economically overall. He'll still need to get some Zerglings to potentially defend. But, yeah, Zergling speed being upgraded, which gives him a big lead. Tech-wise, Zerglings, six Zerglings being produced. A defensive Sunken Colony out for Rancor. Going to be interesting play overall and continuing to pump drones behind this. I actually have not seen this style of play out of a Zerg player before. I think it makes a lot of sense on this particular map. Needs to morph this creep colony, though, sooner rather than later to be able to defend. Dropping Spire first, now going with that creep colony. A single Zergling is going to be able to walk in and scout. That can be pushed back. So what Masuchi needs to do is just send in overwhelming amounts of Zerglings immediately. Rancor needs to defend with drone lines. Two Zerglings being produced by Rancor to help assist. And really, if he can just get stuff in the way, Masuchi now knows what he's up against. He sees the lair, he sees the spire, and just needs to pull the trigger. Honestly, he's got Zergling speed, just run. Flood as many, and at cross spawn position, this is gonna be a challenge. The one advantage is, is once air is out for Rancor, potentially it's going to be challenging for him to get across the map and deal with all the Zerglings that are on the ground. Rancor moving out with Zerglings, Potentially to try to counterattack, but Zergling Speed is going to be there. So I'm not sure that they're going to get a lot accomplished. Taking a lot of free damage. Yeah, these Zerglings are going to get popped. So few units. So basically a Larva lost right there. Rancor dropping a second Creep Colony to potentially try to defend this. The Zerglings trying to peek around that corner. This is going to interrupt a lot of mining time in between. But once that Spire finishes and Mutalisks are up in the air... These Zerglings are, their job is just to create a distraction effectively. Evolution Chamber dropping for Masuchi. He wants to try to follow this up. If he can get some Spore Colonies in his defensive line, that will give him an advantage. He'll have the economic lead and more defensive positioning. So the ground advantage will go to Rancor, but the air advantage, or as far as the defensive hold position, will go to Masuchi. And he might have a lot of time to do that, particularly with the distracting. And actually, these Zerglings aren't sufficient to punch through, so these Mulus might just be able to walk right to the main. The Overlord has, in fact, scouted this position. Creep Colony 
two creep colonies there. The spore colony morphing. Are the mutalisks going to get there in time? It's going to be close. This spore colony already morphing at the main. So potentially the drones can evacuate from the natural expansion until that spore colony finishes. It looks like that spore colony has finished. Plenty of time. But Overlord's now exposed. The Zergling's pulling back. Which potentially opens up a natural expansion for Rancor if he has the wherewithal to capitalize on it. Looks like he is going to go ahead and move out and do so. So currently, Masuchi in the red. Still three drones up. Has a nice defensive posture, though. A drone lead. And a nice defensive shell around his main. So air, air defense, Masuchi's favor. Ground defense in the main, Rancor's favor. Economic advantage to Masuchi. Rancor, scooting around, has a vision advantage comparatively. Also, I think he's going to have that armor one much more rapidly than any upgrade comparatively, so the Mutalisks will just hit harder. So now becomes that tentative space. Masuchi's not in a bad position, but just needs to play it well. Rancor has ways to win this, but he needs to be able to find ways to sneak drones and get that natural expansion up and running and get two gas before Masuchi's able to just outproduce him as far as just the number of Mutalisks. Zergling scooting by, sees that natural expansion being built. Another drone pocketing. Is Rancor going to go for a third? Is this just a transfer? No, he's just going to grab that gas earlier. Gas is the most important bit here. Masuchi now grabbing his second gas as well. Starting to get his Mutalisk count up in the air. Eight Mutalisks currently fielded. And the Overlord starting to exit now for Rancor. He doesn't want to have to defend those out in open field. Masuchi with a significant drone lead. Enough so that he feels comfortable dropping another creep colony. I'm wondering if this is going to be... Potent no, it's going to be additional spores. Wow. It's going to think maybe a uh, something colony. Potentially. Big economic lead for Masuchi. If he, if he can slow play this, basically it's up to Rancor to find some room to punch through this and make it happen. Three drones migrating to go ahead and start that gas production up. But that is a seven drone lead, which is huge for Masuchi, which means as long as he has the larva... He can catch up in the Mutalisk lead eventually. He's getting his own Carapace upgrade. Carapace 1 has finished already for Rancor. He's making his way towards Carapace 2. So at the very least, the Mutalisks he has in the air will have an advantage. Rancor now starting to sneak drones himself to try to equalize things. Masuchi supply capping himself for a moment. But now it's kind of like a interesting war of economy. Some Zerglings running out in the field to go ahead and get that scouting information. Let's see if the Mutalisks are be able to, will be able to hide them. Well, hide them. Pick them off. Ten Mutalisks versus eight Mutalisks in the air. So now the Mutalisk count has actually evened and moved into Masuchi's favor. And Rancor is in a difficult situation where if he just sits back, Masuchi will just outproduce him. Macro to macro. But if he overextends, he could end up dying as well. Supply count even. Masuchi with a significant amount of drones. Zergling wandering in. Not sure if they got a look at the upgrades. That's 12 Mutalisks floating that direction. A full control group over here as well for Masuchi, although minus one. And plus the defensive, yeah. Unless there's Zerglings on the ground to counterattack, this is just a nice sim city on top of everything else. 26 drones now for Masuchi. Rancor not making any economic moves, just continuing to produce Mutalisks. Maybe hoping to overwhelm. He's going to have one big shot to maybe go for an attack someplace. But with the Spore Colonies, especially three of them, and enough Mutalisks to defend otherwise, I think Masuchi is starting to walk away with this. He's dropping a third hatchery to get even more larvae to capitalize on that economic advantage. Really good information considering he's in the dark. Rancor is still trying to scoot out and maybe catch something. A couple Zerglings scooting out as well, making sure an additional third base was not taken. Rancor needs to do something to make this happen. Dropping another Creep Colony and Sutton Colony, some additional Mutalisks. Maybe if he can get some Zerglings on the ground. But right now, Masuchi just, as far as if you can think of it as a scale, it is... Heavy on Masuchi's side. Grabbing a 12 o'clock base. Kind of a risky play right there. Behind in the Mutalist count, but just 
defensively can hold this. Let's see if Rancor can spot that. Rancor gathering up, potentially waiting for level two wep or level two armor to come online before he engages. And the Mutal is patrolling between the 12 o'clock base and the natural expansion. Masuchi potentially feeling like he can just, he can force a fight. He can just follow it up. Drone sitting there for Rancor at the 12 o'clock, now engaging. Gonna force a hatchery cancel. He does force the cancel at the very least. I was gonna say, did he end up losing those resources? Some Mutal is sneaking out in the field. We're hoping to pick off an Overlord or something to counterbalance that. So at least a misstep right there. Nine o'clock base. I don't know when Rancor is going to have the resources to grab that, but looking for a position to do so. Some Zerglings. Actually, another drone was moving out. I think that was a drone that got picked off there. One Zergling was able to sl slip through the lines. But that's going to be engaged by those Mulus. Level two armor is upgraded. Rancor with a sizable Mulus force. So with the brief attempt to take a hatchery, things delayed a bit for Masuchi. He still has a six drone lead. And now he has a Larva lead with that third hatchery at his main as well. So Rancor currently has a superior air fleet. But if Masuchi just shells up, continues to play defensively, his army will eventually outpace. A drone sneaking out once again. It's going to get picked off. The one advantage for Rancor is he knows his opponent, what he's up to, and... Masuji doesn't know whether an additional base or not is being grabbed. It looks like an additional base is being snuck. The 9 o'clock base. Finally, Masuji starting to make these mutals a little bit more aggressive out in the field. I think it's just about even as far as the raw mute account. The one difference here is level 2 armor is online. But both players kind of hovering, just playing the macro aggressive game. Some Zergling slipping through once again. They're going to be able to spot that Overlord. Which is a piece of territory that does need to be defended for Rancor. The Zergling slipping through. Looks like they're going to get all the way to the natural expansion. Are they even going to get a drone out of this? Disrupting a little bit of mining time before getting cleaned up. More Zerglings flooding through. Keep in mind this is Larva that isn't a Mutalisk. Yeah, they're slipping through the lines. A lot of this is going to get picked off as well. So Masuchi kind of donating stuff here and there. Six drones up still. Does find that 9 o'clock base. And this should be a critical moment in decision-making tree for Masuchi. Because he needs, as long as that ba Rancor is taking that base and it's not being opposed, that will end up being game. And it looks like those mutilists are starting to filter out. Let's see if the control groups are going to be there for Rancor. Masuchi engaging. One Mutalisk being caught out of position. They're going to regroup and re-engage. Level 2 Carapace is there for both players. One Mutalisk sweeping away. Going to go up to that 12 o'clock location to halt that. But I think Masuchi might just have too much bulk. We'll see once the dust settles. Doing a good job of focus firing. And yeah, it just looks like the lines are too thick for Masuchi slowly whittling down this army, and I believe once this clears out, that will be GG. So Masuchi able to play the long macro game and take game three as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.